Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Yes, we are a webinar. You can call us that. We are, will not be offended. We embrace our webinar-ness. That's a word I made up. Um, and uh, we do the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. However, if you are unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always go to our website and watch any of our recordings. They are all available there. I'm um, going back to the very beginning of the show, and you can um, just watch things there that you haven't been able to join us with. Uh, join us on um, Wednesdays. Um, the show, both the live show and the recorded show, are free and open to anyone to watch. So, so feel free to share with any of your friends and colleagues too. Any of our shows that are out there. We um, do a mixture of things here, uh, mini training sessions, video trainings, uh, book reviews, interviews, basically anything library related, we will have it on the show. We do bring in guest speakers sometimes, and we do have a Nebraska Library Commission staff do presentations sometimes. And this morning, we have um, me. <laughs> um, I'm the host of the show, and I'm doing a presentation this week. We don't have a guest um, with us. So um, I am your presenter, host and presenter today, doing uh, dual du double duty. Uh, this is a session on 20 cool tools for you and your library. Uh, this is a presentation that I did last fall at the Nebraska Library Association and the Nebraska uh, School Librarians Association Annual Conference, which is our state conference here in uh, Nebraska. And I did this last year at, in the fall at our state conference and decided that it would be a good idea to also put it here on the show uh, to get the information out to anyone who couldn't attend the conference and uh, just to get it out there um, recorded for posterity. So uh, we have a lot of things in the session, I said 20 tools that I'm going to go through in the next hour. They're, um, all of them are free. All of them have free options available to, for them. Some also have pay options that I'll mention sometimes, so you can get some more features or a higher level of um, access or more things that you can do with them on some of them. Um, but every single thing that I do have on here in the presentation is does have something free that you don't have to pay anything for. Um, most times they're also very easy things, not requiring downloads or anything really major as far as installing software or programs or anything. Uh, the list I'm going here is just alphabetical, so there's no, um, these are the best ones, these are the least, be um, you know, worst ones. Uh, they're not categorized in anything, I just said them alphabetical um, as an A to Z thing, just because it was a simple way to do it. Also, um, you won't see any of the URLs up here on the screen. Don't try and scribble them down if you don't it, um, while I'm going through. Um, all the links have been collected into our Delicious account, as we do here at the Library Commission every week for um, Encompass Live. So you can get all the links afterwards into in one URL that I actually have on the last slide. Uh, and when we, the recording goes up, all the links will be available there as well, so you get able to get them that way. So don't try and scribble down any URLs, just you know, maybe information about how you might want to use these. So, with that introduction, I think we're ready to go to our first uh, cool tool. Animoto is the first one we have. There we go, Animoto. Um, and this is one that I know um, I've seen some libraries use and some people have used it before. This is an online um, video creation tool. It's web-based completely, so um, you don't have to download any software or install anything special to use it, no sorts of, you know, video software. It does have mobile apps for your Android and iPhone, so you can use those to create them. There is a pay account um, if you want to pay, but there is also a free for educators account as well, so look for that in the links that I have afterwards. So you can, if you're using it for classroom use as a teacher or a teacher librarian, uh, there is a, there's, there's a free version, there's a pay version, and then a special free for educators, educators account that gets you even more um, features without having to pay extra. Um, to create a video, you just upload your own video clips, your own photos. Um, they have pre-made templates that you can choose to put them into. Um, they have music in a library of songs that they have licensed specially for this, so all the songs are legal and okay to use. And um, add some captions, anything you want to on it, tweak it, and um, you're done. Uh, when you're done with it, you can download the video if you want to onto your own computer. You can embed it into any website or blog post that you want. Um, and then they've got options for sharing it on yeah, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, any of others, all sorts of other social networking sites that you might use. And this is one that was done that I'm going to show you an example of one of these really cool one here. Um, this is the uh, Richmond Elementary School in Vermont did a tour of their uh, 
school library. They actually did it as a scavenger hunt. The librarian there, um, there we go, uh, had them go on a scavenger hunt, gave them each areas of the library that they had to go and look at and figure out, and then um, they gave them little flip cams, and they had to do a video um, explaining an example of here's what these books are and what they're all about. And I'm going to, let's see, I have it over here, the full-size video, show you just what they came up with using this software with the kids in the library. That's just a little example of what they did. You can see all the animation and the text coming in and flying in was done using the Animoto software. And then all the video was done by the kids in the library. And then the teacher um, librarian afterwards put it all together and had this great tour of their library created by the students themselves. So that's Animoto. Next tool is Delicious, which I just mentioned earlier as what we use here at the Library Commission. Social bookmarking site online. Um, you may be bookmarking things in your browser over the years um, and you have them available on your computer, but when you go somewhere else you don't have them anymore. Delicious is one way where you can have them available everywhere. It's all saved online into your online account so you can have things organized and access them anywhere. You can tag them so you know things are under different topics. Um, so you can you know, search for them there and you can also make things public or private. We have public lists that we do here at the Library Commission, of course, for things that we're doing for Encompass Live. Um, but if you have a private account, you can make things private. I have my own account where I have certain things that I've tagged that people don't know about because um, they're for my use only. I didn't need to share them out there. Um, this is just my um, delicious. When I did this, this presentation last year at our state library conference, I tagged them in my own personal account. CJ Burns 42 is my, code, is my uh, account there. And I tagged them all NEBLIB 2013 for Nebraska Library 2013. Um, and then I was able to give that out at the end of my presentation for everyone to go and see everything that I was, um, all of these different tools that I had in the presentation. So it's great to use if you need to be going to different computers, jumping back and forth, home, work, or just different computers in your library, in your building, and you need to share things and make sure you have access to all these different websites that you might be wanting to go back to um, repeatedly. You can use Delicious to be able to do that. Next up we have Feedly. Feedly is an online RSS feed aggregator. RSS is real simple syndication. This is a way of being able to track websites that have updates on a regular basis. You, um, it collects posts from blogs, news sites, web pages, anything that you may follow, may be interested in and want to know something new um, on there. Uh, you can um, save them. You'll, you'll follow them in here. You'll go into this website. You'll say, I want to follow this page, and it will let you know any new, page, new posts have been made, updates to the website, whatever. You can then mark the site things red, delete the ones you've already looked at, save some of them in there if you want to, to read later. Um, it's web-based, so there's nothing to also install with this thing, but it also has Android and iOS apps that sync up with your web-based account so that you can, um, if you've read something on your, on your computer, when you go on your phone um, or on your tablet, it's um, updated to the same things that you've already read there. Um, and you can also share these things right from within Feedly um, onto Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, anywhere that you might have social networking uh, presences. Uh, things like Google Reader where was an RSS feed reader that a lot of people use in the past, and unfortunately they um, Google chose to no longer have that, so uh, people have looked for something as a replacement. Feedly is the one that I use. This is just a screenshot of what I have. Um, of uh, Nebraska libraries that I follow, so things going on in Nebraska libraries. And you can see over here on the left-hand side, I have links. I have everything categorized into different um, groups and types of things that I'm following, uh, techie-related stuff, Nebraska libraries, commission stuff, general news, um, anything you want, you can categorize it. Uh, okay, there's a question about Delicious. I'm not sure if I understand the question. Do you have a Delicious account to view her Delicious account? 
Oh, do you need to have an account to view it? No, I'm sorry. Okay, do you need to have your own delicious account? Going back to delicious, the social book bookmarking site. Do you need to have your own account to view? No, you don't have to have an account. If you make it public, anyone can just go and look at those your links that are out there. You don't have to have your own account to be able to view somebody else's links that are there. It's not um, a private um, thing like that where like you have to be logged in. For example, if you logged into Facebook in order to see anybody's Facebook stuff, no, you do not have to have your own delicious account to view my things that are public or the commission's things that we put out there. So on to the next thing is another video creation tool, Go Animate. Um, this one's different than the first one where you create, add in, you create in your own videos in Animoto. With Go Animate, it's all animated, online animated um, videos. Uh, it's all an online service on a website, nothing to download as well. Uh, you use simple, you drag, drag and drop things from a collection of uh, pictures and animations and whatever that they have on their website with characters, backgrounds, props, actions. Um, you can import things that for uh, to make it specific to your library or school, logos, pictures that you want to have in there, anything, maybe screen captures from databases that you're trying to show. Uh, it has... Um, text-to-speech technology where you type in your script and then it just puts in some, some computer generated voices or you can record your own narration and put that over it as well so you can um, pick and choose which way you want to do that and then you can share it in various ways you can download it and embed it wherever you want to into a website into your into a blog post um, wherever you need it to be um, put it out on YouTube that's where we put our recordings that we do here at the live from our encompass live show um, or all the other different social networks you may be a part of uh, this is just a picture of the screen for creating one you can see over here on the left hand side you have all the different pictures that you could do and you can this is the hand to click and drag it over and then you can end up with an animated, um, a little animated feature at the end. And I've got one here that we have saved that is nice little, a cute little one here with elephants having a little conversation about gossiping. Well hello Roberta Hippo. How are you? Alex, I am so happy to see you. You will never guess what I just heard. I hate to gossip, but what did you hear? I heard from Jenny who heard from Tina who heard from Joey who heard it from his aunt's cousin that Mary is moving to Canada. To a zoo. Oh wow. Are you sure that it's true? Okay, so that's just a little example of one where they use obviously the text-to-speech uh, technology they typed in and then these in uh, computer voices came up for it. And this is actually, in the end, this is a, an, a, a lesson about what are our primary sources and secondary sources. So does when you get to the end of it. It's not just about gossiping, but I um, actually teaches primary and secondary sources in schools and libraries. Kind of cool. Next up, we have Goodreads, which I know um, many libraries have used. This is a social network all about books and about reading and sharing what you um, like in books. The uh, core of the website is the database that all books are entered into and then people put in their own an reviews and annotations and say things about the books. So there's this huge database, it's all user generated information in there um, of people um, categorizing books and saying what they thought was good, what was bad. Um, you see lots of people sharing their Goodreads um, updates and what they've been reading onto social networks. You see it comes up in Facebook all the time, so and so has read this book, so and so wants to read this book. Somebody has created, has written a, a view of this particular book. Um, it also has where you can generate um, lists, reading lists of things, and uh, catalogs. So you can have collections of things in here. Um, you can use it for book groups. So you can have book group discussions. This is a screenshot of the um, what they call Listopia, where they have different lists that people have created and you can add to and you can look at. Um, so you can always see, this is just the one that took the screenshot yesterday, so it's always changing what is the featured lists and which ones have the most activity. Um, top 25 children's books on Good, Goodreads, going back to 1989. Uh, top 100 mysteries and thrillers. So all these things are just um, user generated. They're tagged, so you can you know, search for it by different um, subjects if you want to, however people have tagged the different books. Um, all sorts of different lists here that you can go through and find really um, good recommendations uh, for uh, books. Next up is Infogram. This is our first um, infographic creator. You've seen things uh, that lots of times in newspapers or on websites they share these infographics. Cool pictures, information, 
statistics all put into a nice visual display. Uh, there are lots of, like I said, lots of news sites use them and lots of you know, reporters, but we can do this ourselves as well. Um, Infogram is one that you can use. They've got pre-made uh, templates that you can use. You can add your own text, pictures, uh, up, use a, um, data that you might have in a spreadsheet and have that go into the infographic that comes out in the end with all of your specific t um, uh, statistics. So that's really cool and it takes the spreadsheet really nicely and just spits it in and comes up with this really pretty picture of it all. Um, you can publish it out to your Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, um, embed the um, HTML code from it into a website, whatever you want to, uh, however you want to share it. Uh, this is this example of what I think is a pretty cool infographic that I found <laughs> a while ago. Explaining what an infographic is um, using Legos. Make, take all the all that data that is maybe confusing, you don't know what it's all about, and make it nice and neat and give someone, you know, the idea of exactly what it is it's all about. Uh, something cool that they're doing, they're coming up with, you see here, Video Infographic Creator. I just saw this when I went to their site, checking it out recently. They have an announcement up here, um, the world's first video infographic creator, and they've got a little video about it. It's not available yet, it's coming soon. And it doesn't have any audio on this, but I'll just show you. It's very cool. You're basically taking everything that you've done in a uh, static infographic that we usually have a picture of, uh, whatever, and have it come out. You enter all your information. You see here the uh, text you want. There's a spreadsheet that they've, they've spit into it, and so it comes and makes it into a nice graph. And in the end, you come up with it's creating it. Instead of just a static picture, you have a video of your statistics and your graphics. And here it is. There's the how many people have attended uh, on the web, and there's a little picture of it looking like this. So these are all the kind of things you've seen in those infographics, but animated. So. Keep an eye open for this. As I said, it's coming soon. They, it's not available yet, but I'm going to be keeping an eye on out and checking it out when it is available. Our next cool tool is Instapaper. Uh, Instapaper, this is another free online tool um, where you can save anything you're looking at on the internet to read later. Maybe you're too busy, you don't have time, you found a cool article, somebody shared something, but you don't have time to sit down and read the whole thing right now. So you can save it into um, Instapaper and uh, um, and then go back and read it when you do have the time. Uh, first, you do have to install the Instapaper bookmarklet into your browser, so it'll have a little button at the top that you can use whenever you need to. And then when you find something you want to read, uh, you click on the bookmarklet and it saves it. And then you can go back later. It does have also Android, iPhone, iPad, Kindle apps, so you maybe you're on your computer and find a cool link and you save it and then go home and read it later on your Kindle. Um, it's very simple. As you can see here, this is just a screenshot of what it would look like, um, the website that it came from, the essay, and you can go through it, you can like it, print it out, whatever you want to, and read it that way. So it's just be able to save things for reading, specifically for reading later. The next thing we have is a really cool website called Instructables. I'm um, not sure if you ever looked at this before. This is um, this website specializes in user-created do-it-yourself projects, meaning people just go out there, they've done something neat, they've uh, figured out how to uh, sew something, create something, build something, and they put step-by-step uh, -step instructions up here on this website for anyone to follow so they can do it um, themselves. What's also great about this site is that the users can rate the web, the uh, instructables for quality, so you can see if something is a good one or not so good. Um, they'll comment on it, so it does have that kind of a rating uh, quality to it so that you can see which ones you might want to use. There is a free pro membership for teachers to use it for more teaching capabilities and it does have apps that you can use to um, use it. And you can use almost, you can, it's, it's almost any topic imaginable you can think of. Um, learning Chinese, crafts for story time, knitting. This is one here that I came across <laughs> called Manly Knits. Knitting is a big, is, is very popular in the library world, I know, but Lots of men are into uh, knitting as well, and they've actually got an entire collection of them that they've put together, the instructables, the how-tos that were done by men or for things you might knit for a man. And another thing that's very cool about this that, I, that they have is, here's the manly knits on the actual site. 
as you can see here, step-by-step -step pictures and instructions on how to do things. But it's also downloadable in this particular one. They've collected, made, put them all into a collection. It's downloadable as an ebook. So if you don't want to just use it off the website, you can download the PDF or EPUB version of this and use it on your favorite e-reading device and have this particular collection, Manly Knits, all together on your um, how, whatever device you want to. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. The whole site, everything on here is free. So um, not everything, you know, there's, there's different collections that will be put together. You'd have to search and see if you find ones that do actually have the ebook option. But um, when they do, that's really cool for just, you know, taking it with you off of the website. Our next cool tool is um, also in um, instructional Khan Academy. Uh, you may have seen, I've seen videos on, or not videos, commercials on TV about this now. This is, uh, the Khan Academy is a nonprofit website. Um, that gives free online instruction, free, they call micro lectures, video tutorials that they post up onto YouTube and are available on their website. They have thousands and thousands of them here on all sorts of different topics. Um, the nonprofit was originally started with grants from the Gates Foundation, Google, and donations from individuals and charitable organizations to get it started. Uh, on their website, when you go to it, you'll see it says it is free forever. There's, they have no, they will never charge anything for this. That's the whole point of it is to give free tutorials on all these areas, math, science, humanities, um, all sorts of different topics. Um, there's lots of video uh, tutorial sites out there, training sites. Many of them cost. Some have a few things you can get for free, but if you want more, you've got to pay a subscription. Khan Academy um, does not charge anything. They um, contract with teachers and educators to create these videos. Um, very simple step-by-step -step exercises to get to learn all these different uh, concepts. Um, and there's also a per, what they call a personal learning dashboard. Once you do create an account with them, you can then track your progress. There is statistics that come out um, and data about your performance to see how you're doing, how you're improving your still skills in these different areas, how you, what, maybe what this is the next video you might want to go to. Uh, they have what they call their knowledge map, where you can um, connect different uh, concepts together. This is just their basic knowledge map, where you've got counting to 100, comparing size, and you can see how these things might connect to each other. So if you've done one set of exercises here on comparing numbers through 10, I'm not sure you agree that you might want to go to teen numbers, and then understanding two-digit numbers, and working your way through the concepts. Uh, something that just got announced, I believe last week, NASA has just released and added to the Khan Academy and partnered with them and has sections on specifically about space and science and what NASA does. So this is just announced, this is very cool, I was looking through all these last week, that they have um, different areas here now that if you're interested in science and space, um, NASA mission control, measuring the universe and exploring the universe, all different categories of um, learning about space, geocentric universe, planets, heliocentric model. They have interactive um, exercises here. So here's one you have to actually interact with it, doing learning about models of the solar system, um, animation about phases of the moon. So this is very cool now that NASA has just partnered with the Khan Academy to create all of this educational uh, training videos that are available for free to, for anyone. And our next tool, we're halfway through now of our 20 cool tools. This is PictoChart. This is another infographic creation tool, just like Infogram that we talked about before. Um, works a little differently. Um, you do is choose a theme, upload your stats from your spreadsheets. They've got an editor that you can use. Um, what this one is, is a little different how you use it. It's got this drag and drop functionality where you can just cl click um, and drag and things that you might want to put into your uh, infographic that will come out afterwards. Um, just like Instapaper, or not Insta, <laughs> Infogram, you can upload your own photos, your own logos, your library logos, whatever you want. Um, what is also different about this, though, is different from Infogram, is you can export this as an image. So you can download it onto your computer as an image that you can put in anything, if you want to put it in a flyer or in a newsletter or something. With Infogram, you just have HTML code that comes out from that for sharing it. So it's basically just an online thing. This one, you can do it as an image, and you have that drag and drop functionality for it. So it just depends on which way you want to share things later and which way you want to play with for creating your infographics. They've got a collection on their website of other users' infographics, so you 
can see what um, other people have done and get some ideas. Um, these are just some examples of them that are on their website. So it is another infographic creation tool, um, but with different features. So you might want to try each one to see which one works best uh, for your purposes and what you are wanting to do with it. So next up we have Pixlr. This is a free also free online photo editing. Uh, maybe for photos you'd think to use uh, something like uh, Photoshop, which costs money and um, does have some great features and whatnot. But like I said, it does cost money. You might not be able to afford getting something like that. Pixlr is online and it is free. Um, you can filter things, adjust things, whatever you want to do for um, tweaking your photos that you have out there. It has, they call it express and advanced editor versions. So you can have a basic version depending on your skill level and a more um, in-depth one for more, if you need to get more creative or you have higher skill level and want to play even around more with your photos. Um, so depending on what kind of editing you want to do. And also something called pixlr Omatic, which is really cool, a whole separate third tool that you can use um, filters, lighting, and borders to uh, give your photos a vintage or retro look. So that's just kind of a fun thing to play around with. Um, you can download it onto your computer. You can use it on the web or you can download. There's a Facebook app that you can use when you're in Facebook with your photos that are there. Um, it also has Android and iOS apps. So for pictures that, are already, that you take with your phone, you can use it to edit those photos as well once you download the app um, onto your uh, device. And this is just a screenshot of what the different options are. Um, this is a little cat that lives a couple streets down, a couple houses down from me that I took a picture of. And you can see here all the different options you have of what you could do to this photo. Um, blurs, adjust the color, contrast, um, oh, if she had teeth, whiten her teeth. Red eye reduction, you know, the standard. So it's got lots of different, and this is just the basic one um, of the choices that you have. So if you have photos that you need to work on and edit and make some tweaks to it that you want to make a little funky using some of the filters or the uh, pixlr matic to make it retro looking, um, Pixlr is a free tool online that you can use. It has tons of really good um, features in it. Next up, we have a readability. This is also another online reading service similar to Instapaper where you can um, store the articles you find to read later. However, what it also does is what's important about it is that it turns, takes these articles or web pages or whatever you're finding online and makes them easier to read, cleans them up, uh, removes any um, ads or animation or anything that's next to it on the screen there that may be distracting when you're trying to read it and uh, cleans all of that up and gives you a nice um, simple view of um, just the article that you really want to read. Um, it's a browser add-on just like Instapaper would be, so you just add, do a little plug-in and then you have a little button at the top of your browser that will say readability and you'll, whenever you find something that you want to clean up and make it easier to read, you click on that and then you could store it if you want to as well to read later. Um, there's also Android and iOS apps for it as well, just like almost everything now it seems, so you can um, either save and read them later. When you save them into your account, you can then read them later on your phone. Your Kindle has a link to a tablet, whatever you want to do it. And this is what it actually does here. Here's an article from the New York Times. On the left, you can see all the ads and things, and some of them might be animated ads and pictures. And once you go through the converting process, you end up with what it looks like on the right, just the article. None of that other stuff that they've put in the margin and the top and the bottom. You get just the article to read, so um, cleaning up all of that. Anybody have any questions? If you do have any questions throughout this, just feel free to type them in. I am watching your questions and I keep an eye on them, so let me know if you do. Next up, we have Reddit. Uh, you may have heard about this a lot online. This is a social news site, um, different from the online bookmarking sites. It is um, users, anyone who wants to in the world can post a news story they found interesting. They can post it on there online once you get an account and share it. Then other user, users get to vote on the story, making it appear higher or lower on the list of news items based on um, if they think it's good or not. So in this way, the reading community actually decides what's um, more interesting or relevant and what's not. So stories will, will uh, rise up or, or you know, lower down on the list. Um, so the community kind of judges um, what's good and what's bad. There's a lot of interesting things in there, some con controversial things on there. You've got to be careful when you're searching around and using it. 
Uh, but it is, you know, pretty cool to see, you know, what does the world in general think of these particular stories? What cool things have popped up? Um, libraries have started using it as well, though. There is now a, there are sub community, there are communities that are within Reddit called subreddits, and there is one specifically for libraries. Um, and I've got the URL linked um, in our show notes, so you can jump just to the one. And all that is is librarians and library-related discussions. So if you want to just jump to things library-related, you can go there. Um, if you're looking for other communities, search for them, and you might find them as well if there's other topics or anything that you are interested in. Um, Reddit also does, which you maybe have heard, have heard about people announcing, they do um, what they call AMAs, Ask Me Anything. Um, um, Barack Obama, the president, has done one. Um, celebrities writers, um, all sorts of different people do these things. And they've actually created, did one just recently, an experiment where there's a public library edition of an Ask Me Anything. Um, Ask Me Anything is when um, someone goes on and logs on for a, cer at a certain time of day, um, for a certain amount of time, an hour or two, and anyone who wants to can log in and ask this person questions. Type them in. It's all done through text uh, typing on the website and as it says ask me anything and usually it's pretty much is anything um, uh, this is a screenshot here of the reddit specifically for libraries so it says reddit libraries at the top this is the screenshot I took yesterday and you can see everything here is very library related um, and just recently innovative had acquired VTLS some of you may be interested in that depending on which one of those you may own uh, Judy Bloom Publishers fighting back against Amazon and the whole hatchet thing going on with that. So just anything library related could be in the uh, libraries Reddit. And I think I had here, yes, this is, get over here, there we go, there we go. This is when they did the AMA, Ask Me Anything, Public Library Edition. It was, um, PLA did this as an experiment earlier this year in March, so for about a week in March they had um, library directors and um, library administrators come on and anyone who wanted to could ask them questions. And it was moderated by people, this actually right here at this time was moderated by um, one of our local people here, Manya Shore up at Omaha Public Library was involved in this and helped moderate um, during some of the time. Um, and what is great about this, it was not a live event, um, ask me anything on these particular dates, but it's all saved now. You can go there, this is actually right on the website, and see the questions that were asked and see the answers that were given. So next up we have Screencast-O-Matic. This is um, great for doing teaching, obviously, and um, showing how to use different websites. It's free online screen recorder. There are lots of uh, services. There are services you can purchase to do this um, that um, may cost you an annual fee or something, but this is a free version of it, instant screen capture video sharing. Basically, whatever you are doing, whatever is happening on your screen, you can use this. You just um, use the web version of it, have it click on the button and have it just start recording um, exactly what you're doing. Um, and it not only records where you're clicking with your mouse, but also what happens when you click. So does a pop-down menu appear? Does a new window open up? Um, is your cursor positioned in a text box? You can start um, inputting text. So it's just basically mindlessly saving everything you're doing on your screen. Um, if you have a microphone, you can also record audio along with it so you can describe what you're doing on your screen as you're doing it. Um, and after it's done, you can embed it into a web page, upload it to YouTube, put it on any other social media sites you want to. Um, there's various ways, um, formats that you can export the, your uh, recording as, QuickTime, Windows Media Player, um, Flash, whatever it is that you want to uh, use. And here's just a screenshot of one. This is the um, actually someone who calls himself uh, the Screencast King. <laughs> um, a did a readability demo, a demo of readability, the previous uh, resource that I mentioned. And let's see here. Do, do, I'm going to try to show. There we go. And this is his demo using Screencast-O-Matic of readability. You come across on a regular basis uh, web pages, blogs, news stories. Might be a little difficult to read the font. Sometimes the font's too small. Sometimes there's just too much garbage going on on the page. It's all distracting. 
this page we're using this example is not too bad. I can read that just fine. But what if I want to kind of lean back in a chair and I'm you know, not having to squint? <laughs> I use readability. See up here in the left hand corner? See this little this little uh, uh, um, button on my bookmark bar. So that's just his the start of his little screen hash demo, and you can see everything he was doing scrolling up and down when his mouse was moving around. You see, I had that little circle around it to let you you know catch your attention to show this is where I'm clicking on next. That's how Screencast-O-Matic can um, capture just everything you're doing. Um, into a video that you can then share to show how to use something, how to use a website, how to uh, m navigate the library's website or a certain database. All right, next up we have uh, Tex, Tex, Tegzito. Tegzito, I always have to think about how to pronounce that one. Um, this is a word cloud generator. Um, you may have seen different things where um, they take a bunch of words and terms that have been mentioned in a website or on a, on a, in an article or something and make them into uh, a, a shape. And then it just visualizes the word frequency so you can see what kinds of things um, are more important. Uh, words that appear more often display in a larger font than those that occurred less often. So you can see the rel that indicates the relative importance of the term, meaning they appeared more often in the article or on the web page. That means they're, they're, that ideally that means they are more important. Um, but what you do here is just enter your text either from a document or a website, um, choose a shape you want it to fit it into, and poof, it creates your word cloud. Um, and then you can save it as an image so you can import and put it into anything you need to, into a document, into a website. Um, it does JPEG or any sort of format that you need. Um, you can also print it out, share it online, all sorts of different things you can do with it. This is one that I just did. Whoops. There we go. I took the Nebraska Library Commission website. Just I actually told it to go to this whole website and see, and collect all the terms from there and make it into a the shape of Nebraska. So these are the terms that come up most often on the Nebraska Library Commission website. Everything's like obviously Nebraska library librarian. Um, but it's interesting to see some of the smaller ones in there: uh, advisory, internships, young. Uh, Nebraska Access is down there at the bottom. So this is just a pretty simple one saying just look at this whole website and make it and then I picked the color too. Of course I went with red for Nebraska. <laughs> um, and then um, made it into the shape of Nebraska. So pretty cool. It's just visually, you know, add to something to a report, maybe add something to a flyer or something you're, you're promoting and show this is the kind of things we're doing at this event. Or after an event has happened and you have a report or you have um, things that people have created, you can create, here's based on what we did, this is what was the most important topics that were discussed or that happened at this event. Oh, we do have a question. Going back to readability, can you use it for Prezi? Um, can you use readability for Prezi? Um, I don't think it would be something for that. It's mainly for things like web pages and things like that that are static to make them, like I said, it takes away the um, ads or sidebar things or extra stuff that's been put onto a website. And I'm not sure, I don't think it would do anything with, with a uh, Prezi, which is those animated, the whole pro the whole uh, presentation is animated. It wouldn't really. Um, I've never tried to use it on a Prezi. I never thought about it for that purpose. <laughs> um, but I don't think that's really what it's for. It cleans it up. Embed readability into Prezi. Um, Oh, well, after you have the article that has been cleaned up, embed that into readability, into Prezi? Sure. If you have something after, like if you've um, cleaned up and then saved the article, then yes, I would assume you'd be able to then embed that into Prezi. I, I'm just guessing. I don't know off the top of my head, but I can't, I can't imagine why not, because you're going to have a saved version of that, like I showed in the slide, that you can then do what you want with. Yep. All right, what's next? This was, next, ah, next up, we have TeacherTube. Uh, this would be just like YouTube, but specifically for education. Um, 
educationally focused, um, safe venue for sharing instructional videos. Um, as it says here, it's designed, it was designed specifically for teachers in schools and home learners, um, basically is where it came from, but it's free and open for anyone to use. You don't have to have an account, you have to sign up to use it. They do have options where you can to add your own videos and, and whatnot to it if you want to um, and review things, but it is free and open for anyone. Um, the videos are also rated on here. Um, the community members um, use a rating system to highlight the videos that they find valuable as an educator or as a learner, so from either side. So you can also see which videos might be good for you depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, this is just a screenshot of what the main page looks like. They've got some featured videos that are up. You can see how many views they have, um, some things that are trending. They also have a search feature. So I'm going over here to the actual site live where you can search for any topic that you might want to find a video about. And I just typed in library because that's what I would do. And got a, hopefully it'll come up here pretty quickly. There we go. Any videos that mention libraries. Um, here's a library orientation for elementary students. I'm sure it's probably for a particular school. Uh, 21st century school library design, proper care of library books. Um, and here's just one, how to take care of library books. And we'll get this running up here. So this is just someone did said if you've borrowed a book, what you should how you should take you could should use it when you have it at home. What happens to your library books when you get home? How to take care of your library books by Mrs. Stover. Haley is excited because she brought home a book that she got to pick out at the library and can't wait to read. But borrowing a library book is a huge responsibility. We must all take care of our library books so they don't get hurt. Let's find out if Kaylee is making good choices when it comes to taking care of her library books. So you can see there, it looks very similar to YouTube, but like I said, it's all teacher-focused, education-focused, um, learning and rated and I know some people, some places, um, schools do have issue with even using YouTube. This is all a safe place to go to if you're looking for educational type videos. Next up, we have a poll service, TwitPoll. Um, this is a web-based um, tool that you can use to create surveys um, that will appear on social media sites, on Twitter, on Facebook, um, wherever you want to share. So if you're looking to try to find out what people are interested in, uh, what they might want as a new service, how they felt about the service you have, you can create a poll on here. You have a single question, more than one question. Um, it's a basic, a very simple online web form. You just enter it all in. It's all web-based, nothing to download or install or do anything like that. Um, share it on the web online and then um, get the answers back via your account. Um, you do have to have a Twitter account. It is based off of Twitter to create a poll. Um, in the first place, but anyone responding does not have to have one. So you just need to have an account, which you may have for yourself or for your school or library already. Um, use that to create the poll, um, but then anyone who's answering it does not have to have an account. They can just answer it as they want to, and then you get the questions back, the answers back. Um, afterwards, it can then, you can uh, display it as uh, charts, graphs, which is really nice. So after you get your answers, you can set up this kind of thing. you got bar graph choice here, pie chart, um, however you want to, to show um, afterwards, here is what everyone said, and here's what the um, responses were. So if you're looking for doing a quick poll online um, for free, um, SurveyMonkey is something that you can pay to use, uh, other services like that. This is a one that can do a very simple, easy way of doing it um, quick and free and online. Next up, we have yet another infographic creator. Yes, there are three of them in here in the session, but they do do this, um, some different things. Has some of the, all the basic same basic features that Infogram and PictoChart with as far as inputting your information, um, putting your stats in there. Um, creating, having templates, um, creating everything you want to. Um, the cool thing that Visually does is it can actually gather information and statistics from your Facebook account or your library's Facebook account or your Twitter account to create a personal infographic about that account. Um, 
they call the Facebook one your your uh, Facebook social life or uh, your Twitter hashtag. You can, if you have maybe had an event and you created a hashtag for it, for example, if ALA um, has a hashtag for you know their conference, so it's ALA 2014. I'm not sure if that's the right one, but I'm just making it up. You can then say create an infographic based on those hashtags, and I'll take it, go out there and look at everyone who has done use that hashtag and create an infographic about it for you. Or you can have it go into your Facebook account where you approve the app to access your account. It pulls statistics off of your specific um, live, your Facebook page. You do it for your personal one or you can do it for your libraries and then you can share um, what is, you know, what they call the Facebook social, like what your Facebook page has been doing. Um, after you've created it, you can download it as an image or a PDF so you can do whatever you need to it um, with it and then share it on of course all the usual Facebook or all the usual social networking places. Share it on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, wherever. Um, you can email a link to it to people, so I'll give you that as well. You can say, hey, check out this cool infographic that I made up about our library's Facebook page. Look at all the cool things we've been doing. Um, embed code will let you put it onto the li a website somewhere. Um, and it's not just a place to create infographics, it also is a repository for infographics created by others. So if maybe there's a topic you're interested in, you want some statistics on it, something cool, you can go in there into their database and search for a particular topic and find an infographic that you might want to share. So it's um, they have lots of things there that you can just take and borrow that have been created by users and say, oh cool, we need to know about this topic and here's the great statistics on it and it's based on this information and these um, reports and studies and here it is. Um, here's an example where I just did the Facebook social life of our Encompass Live webs, uh, Facebook page um, that we have out there. So it tells you that um, it looks at the performance for the last 30 days. Currently, we have 181 fans. In the last 30 days, no one has um, liked us um, recently, but that's okay. And then this is just the beginning of this. A lot more below this. It didn't all fit on the slide, but it tells you, and this is just based on what people have said in their Facebook profiles, okay, so you do have to take this with a slight grain of salt. Most of the fans are female, most are 35 to 44 years old, and there'd be a whole bunch more statistics below that. So it's a pretty cool thing to see if you just want to know what's going on with your Facebook page, maybe just for your own use, but then to share it if it's something that comes out really cool and you want to show, hey, look, our Facebook page is doing these great things. Next up, we have a wee GIF, or GIF. Depends on how you decide to pronounce that. This is an, a free online service which allows you to make simple animated um, GIFs. That's where like little things are kind of jumping around on the screen. I'll show you that in a second. Um, you can create them. You take snapshots from your webcam or op upload different um, pic photos from your digital camera. Um, combine them and into an animation right on the website. You just upload them into, onto their website. Once again, nothing to download for you. You just upload your things into their site and then it will create a little animation for them. Um, you can email them to people, download, share, um, make them into avatars, use them for whatever way you might want to. Um, this here you can see is how you upload them. You can see the different pictures you put in. You can decide do you want to set the speed, rotate them, um, do some special effects on the pictures, whatever it is you might want to do with the tool. Uh, let's see here. This is our list of all of the, I just wanted to show you what it looked like. I didn't have this one open. Mm -hmm. There it is. And you can see here, it's just an example of one. If you can see it moving, I'm not sure how well it's, but it just kind of jumps back and forth of the different people took multiple pictures of this one site, this location, and put it together in a little animated um, thing. This is the kind of thing that maybe you might see someone so -and -so, showing someone jumping up and down out of somewhere or popping in and out of a picture, but you can get really creative with it with you know static photos that you've taken and then make them look a little um, animated in there. Okay. And we are on to Z. This is our final tool. This is number 20. We've made it through all of them. This is uh, Zoho Writer. Uh, Zoho is actually a collection of different things that they have out there. They have, um, they have this software tool or this word processing program, they have a spreadsheet program, they have an instant messaging program, chatting program, all sorts of different things. Um, but it is free and it's online. So you don't need to download and install or maintain any software. So maybe if you're looking for something to do word processing but you can't afford or don't have Word, um, you want something that has a lot of more functionality than just a basic uh, notepad type thing, you could use uh, Zoho's online word processing program. 
Um, you can share them online with people, just like in Google Docs. Um, if you're, you know, don't want to use Google as well, it's something that some people may have not prefer not to do. You can share um, online. You have multiple users. You can edit it online together. Um, you do need to create an account with Zoho to use it. Um, but once you are uh, in your account, it looks and works just like any traditional word processing program. Um, and here is what it would look like. You can see up here where you have your inserting page set up. Uh, all the different cut and crop and choosing your different fonts and everything, all the things you'd ever see in a uh, traditional word processing program. You've got all the same functionalities here online. And you can save them, let's go back to the slide here, uh, into Zoho that you, so you can then access them every, anywhere, which is a nice perk there that you don't have to um, just save them onto your computer, onto your flash drive and take them, save them into your Zoho account. And then on anywhere you are, you can go ahead and get into the document you're working on. And you can also export it in whatever format you need. If you need a Word doc, um, plain text as an HTML, you can take this document you've created, make it into a web page, make it a PDF right within Zoho. Um, you can do that there as well. So if you're looking for something free online, uh, word processing tool, doesn't require anything to be downloaded and installed on your computer, this would be a great tool for you. Ah, question, can you create a, uh, something with a video on the WeGift site? Um, I don't know that it would do videos. I'm not sure about that. I've only seen using actual static screen uh, snapshots and pictures. Um, it would take snapshots from your webcam. So if you did up, you know, so it will take individual shots there. The whole point of it is that it kind of jumps around, um, not looking like a video in the end, but you can use a video you have and it will grab, um, I guess you'd say grab screenshots from it and then use those to create it. So you can upload a video and then it will grab parts of it from there. Um, it won't have a video, a smooth video afterwards. That's not the point of it. But yes, it can grab um, from your webcam or from just standard uh, static photos. Okay, any so that is that was our last tool number twenty, uh, our Zoho Writer. Anybody have any questions about any of the tools that I have um, shared today, um, or anything that you want to share about any cool tools that you know about that might be similar to these that do some of these things? Type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. I can share what you have, or whoops, I see. Okay, I see. Uh, Janet there, I see you've got your hand raised. Um, I've unmuted you. Do you have a question? Uh, no. Sorry. Nope. Okay, no problem. Okay, so we do have a few things coming up. Um, a uh, recommendation from someone, uh, something called .epub is like readability, but turns the pages into EPUB or a mobile ebook files. Ah, cool. So if you want to do something that's more ebook related, um, .epub. I will add that to our links. Let me write that down so I can get that on here. It's like it's dot capital E pub. Um, so if you're looking for something that will change it into not just a plain text thing um, into an EPUB, that'd be a good resource. Thanks. Uh, yep, and uh, as far as a social bookmarking site, I've heard about this one too that is similar to Delicious. Um, Digo, D-I-I-G-O, um, similar to Delicious, but also allows you to create notes. That's true. Um, Delicious does allow you to add notes as well um, to the different things. I've done that in some of the ones that I've saved, yeah. I know a lot of people, when Google Reader was a big one that a lot of people used, I used it. I was very upset. And as, as many people were, that um, when Google decided to um, retire Google Reader, uh, so many people were using it, it wasn't really, um, I don't know. They decided to cancel, get rid of it, and a lot of people had to find somewhere else to go. Um, oh, this actually So uh, as it's here, you can do the notes and upload PDFs. Um, yep, you can do that in Delicious as well. Create handouts. Cool. Um, Another reader that's similar to Feedly and Google Reader is Silver Reader. Oh, I've not heard of that one. Um, this person says they switched to it from Feedly and some things are still in development, but so far they like it better than Feedly. 
Um, yep, do keep your, the Feedly OMPL file yet to import things back and forth. That's what's great about a lot of these things. When Google Reader is dying, you could export out all of your feeds that you were doing and import them into a new one. That's what I did um, as well. So um, Silver Reader might be another option for people who are looking for something else. Um, Feedly, when it first came out, also was not... Um, didn't have all the features that you might want when they when when Google Reader first went away. They they kind of I think everyone was taken by surprise, uh, but they have improved some of their things as well. But Silver Reader might be another one to look at as well. Oh, and something else I mentioned: create fun cartoons with Powtoon.com. Uh, let's see here. So this would be something to do, again, just like doing an animated video, you could use um, Powtoon. It's free and it's awesome, according to them. <laughs> let's see if I can find the, let's see, dot e pup. Here's the one that was for download any web page as an ebook. There we go. Nice, in the cloud. So there's the .epub.com. And we'll add all of these links to our um, show links afterwards. Let's see what Silver Reader. That's one I have not looked at before. Let's see if it comes up here. Free, it will always be. Cool. So Silver Reader, if that's another one you want to look at for uh, doing your RSS feeds. Okay, we have one more thing. Uh, Snap Guide that someone has mentioned. What does this do, Julie? Let's see. Oh, How-To Guide. So similar to Instructables. But you said that it, you have to have an iPad to create them. Okay, so picture instruction guides. Nice. All right, so that's good. Lots of good ones. Um, all these other ones that were mentioned, I will also add to our show notes. Um, so like I said, Zoho Reader was the last um, boat tool, but we do have one bonus tool for you. Um, there's one thing that all the tools that I shared do have in common. All the tools that I um, have told you about, all 20 that I have on here, have all been part of our Nebraska Learns 2.0 program. This is a self-discovery program which where we um, share different cool tools or tech sites or things out there um, once a month. Uh, this is part of, um, started out as one of those traditional 23 things programs. If anyone has participated in those where you have a set number of new tools, uh, learn how to do blogging, new, learn how to use Twitter, uh, learn how to use Flickr for photos, whatever, um, in a short period of time or in a specific period of time, and we did start ours this way back in uh, 2009. We did our Nebraska Learns 2.0, our first one, where we did it, um, I think it was over 16 weeks, and we had 23 things. Um, after it was done, people uh, were very interested and wanted more, so now we have it as an ongoing resource, learning resource. Once a month, a new thing is shared on here, and everything that we I've mentioned in this presentation were all things, as we call them, on Nebraska Learns 2.0. So if you want to learn more about these, you can go on to our website there and see what our current thing is. The one right now for this month in uh, June is NetGalley, um, where you can get advanced, you can see right there, it says advanced reader copies um, of upcoming books and check out them. You can read them on there, you can get copies of them, you can do reviews of them. Uh, so it's open to, this is a program, anyone who wants to can go on to our site and see our different things that we're sharing here. For Nebraska librarians, all library staff, friends, board members, school media specialists are, are invited to, are, you know, open, is open for you to use it. Uh, for people looking for continuing education credits for everything that you do, you do earn one CE credit here in Nebraska. Um, if you're from outside of Nebraska, you would want to check in with your continuing education coordinator to see if they would give you credit for uh, doing the, the um, tool thing that we've suggested. Um, we talk about it, we give a little exercise and a lesson to tell, give you a way to explore it and learn more about it. Um, so you can check that out. We also do, as you can see here, it talks about a book thing you can see there. Um, once a month we give you a book to read. Also something related to libraries, maybe slightly related to libraries. So you can read a certain book once a month and earn some continuing education credits that way. 
So if you want to learn more about these or if you want to see what's coming up, um, check out Nebraska Learners 2.0 and uh, join your library co colleagues uh, learning about all these uh, new uh, internet tools, technologies, websites. Um, you never know what we'll have coming up next time. So that is my contact information there. And that is the URL there that you would take down if you wanted to get all of the links that I mentioned today. It will also be included when the recording is sent out to you as well. So if you don't get that written down, um, that's okay. You'll have the link sent to you. But um, in our delicious account for the Nebraska Library Commission Reference Department, I've used the tags and Compass Live and Cool Tools to mark all of these um, tools that I, I mentioned today. And like I said, I will add in the ones that people did mention in the question section as well so that um, you can have a few more extra ones. So anybody have any last minute questions, comments, thoughts before we wrap up for this morning? Okay. Um, so that will wrap it up today. The show has been recorded. It will be processing um, today. Um, should be available later today, maybe tomorrow, depending on how long it takes to process everything. Um, it'll be posted up onto our website, and I'll send you all emails to let you know when it is available. Um, hope you'll join us uh, next week when our topic is broadband and libraries. Um, we are going to have uh, Connie Hancock and Charlotte Narges from, they're all both from the UNL and University of Nebraska at Lincoln Extension offices. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the new, the the Nebraska Broadband Initiative, what's going on with that and getting um, broadband across the state and what's going on with that. So definitely sign up for that with us, um, our show next week, or any of our other topics that we do have coming up in the next um, month or two. Uh, and Compass Live is also on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, you can like us there. And um, anytime we have new items coming, new shows coming up, recordings available, we post here on our Facebook page. So if you are a Facebook user, um, like us on Facebook, um, get our Facebook uh, social life up numbers up there, and you'll um, keep an eye on what's going on um, with us this way. Other than that, thank you very much, everyone, for attending, and um, I hope you'll join us next week and in future shows. Bye.